ladies and gents, and welcome back to DCS World with Mags, and welcome aboard the A10C. Bit of a special one for you today, as, well, there's a few things here I want to show you as a, well, for new pilots within DCS. But first things first, I want to show it, throw out a little bit of a thank you to Cole. Cole is one of my subscribers, and he contacted me last night saying that he actually had a spare key floating around for the A10C, as we'd spoken earlier, and I told him that I didn't actually have the module. He threw the key in my way, and this video... Wow, nice thunder. Um, he threw the key in my way, and this is, video is partially a little bit of a thank you to him to show him my first fly out in the A-10. Now, this is the second time in the cockpit for me. This will be the first time I've ever rolled it off the spot. I've just run out a few systems tests just to see whether or not or how this video could be made. Now what I want to cover in this video is just for new pilots, uh, new players to DCS. I've been getting a lot of questions since I've started doing DCS videos again about the, real, uh, the realism of the modules and particular options that are or aren't available that make it easier to learn. So I want to cover a few of those today. Now first is the flight controls for the aircraft. This is probably the most asked question. DCS aircraft feature two control modes. There is a game mode and a simulation mode. Simulation is full control of all of the avionics, all the systems, as you would have to control with the real aircraft. Game mode, the controls are much simpler. A lot of the systems are automated. Generally, most of the actual flight and aerodynamics is mostly the same, although they are softened up a little bit. Even softening them up in DCS world, game mode can still give you quite a challenge learning how to fly. So there is an option enabled in that. I only use simulation mode. I used to use game mode a lot, but I don't anymore because I, f I found I was learning bad habits in game mode. So I try and learn everything from simulation mode from the word go. There is a couple of other features I also I do use, however. The second one, and it's been most asked, has been target markers or target indicators. I have a lot of subscribers that are older who have eye conditions similar to my own or uh, aging and, you know, over years, your eyes tend not to work so well. Does DCS have options to help those people, or to help people that just don't want to have to spot the targets, just want a little bit more of a gamier experience? Well, yes, it does. And I do use them, kind of. So I'm going to flick to the externals of the aircraft at the moment, and there's the Warthog in all of its glory. Now, you'll notice the blue text in the center of the aircraft. That is a DCS target marker. It has a dot indicating the location of the aircraft, the name of the aircraft, range to aircraft, and a little bit of basic information on it. You can have these enabled. In full simulation and on the full simulation multiplayer servers, they are not available, which is why I try not to fly with them. But I do have them activated in the background. What I generally do when I'm flying out is I will activate them for the mission and then press Shift F10 and turn them off as so. If I find my eyes are playing up, I can turn them back on. But those options are available, and there's actually options with them. So you can have them set up so you'll only get a marker like that for friendly aircraft, you'll only get a marker like that for enemy aircraft, ground units, so on and so forth, or any combination that you choose. So there is a marker system available in DCS. As I said, generally try not to use them, but they are available for those who feel the need to have them, which can make it a little bit easier for you to learn to use the aircraft. Now the third part is the accuracy of the aircraft systems itself. DCS is well known for its full fidelity cockpits, especially in the advanced modules, where you have to actually run the aircraft's proper startup sequence in order to be able to get even get the engine started to be able to roll out. And this is entirely true. You can start the A-10 just off the switches you see in the cockpit. Everything in here, as you can see, is fully clickable. A simple click, left click, will flick a tight switch up, right click will flick a switch down. Every switch in the cockpit is controllable by you. Every dial can be turned, every knob can be turned, every single system operates as the systems of the real aircraft and you can entirely start the aircraft using just these switches. And it is a hell of an achievement to learn how to do this, especially with an aircraft like the A-10. But it will take you several hours and not everybody wants to spend several hours, you know, learning how to start the aircraft that they've just paid, you know, AAA levels of money to purchase. So there is a shortcut for this, and I'm going to use this today because, as I said, I only got the code for this last night, and I've only just started looking at it today. So, what you do is activate the auto startup sequence, which I have pre-bound. Just pressing the switch, auto startup sequence is running, and the aircraft will go through its entire startup procedure in front of you, including flipping all the switches in the cockpit, unlocking the throttles, 
everything that you need to do to power on the A10 will happen right before your eyes. Now it's going to get awfully loud here, so I'm just going to close the cockpit. This is usually the last step in the startup sequence, but I can bypass this one. Control C to close that one, and that'll just uh, quieten up the storm and the engine startup sequences just a little. Now, as you saw from the start, the engine startup sequence on the A10 will take about four minutes to run up. The aircraft is ready to roll in about two minutes, however. Uh, the final sequences are getting the navigation systems and so on online, and we can actually be rolling down to the runway for that, in which case we will. So I'm just going to have a look around the cockpit here, and you'll see the switches and the systems toggle themselves as different things activate. I'm just checking to make sure. Uh, hydraulic systems are still pumping, I don't have a lot of control there yet. Left throttle has jumped forward, it means the left, uh, left engine is spinning up. Multifunction display is coming online. While I'm at it, we'll activate the ground lighting, which is that one there. Uh, master caution, that gets really annoying in a hurry, so we'll click on that one and get rid of that. Yeah, navigational systems, four minutes left. And that's what most of the startup sequence on the A10 is. But as you can see, if you pick up the module straight away, all you need to do is bind the auto start sequence keys. They usually already have a binding on them. You can either use that or customize your own, obviously. And you can power the engines up and watch the startup sequence for the first time. And take the aircraft for a flight straight out of the box without actually having to, to learn all the systems before you begin your first fly out. Now, I have had some experience with the A10 before, but not the A10C module. I have the Flaming Cliffs pack, which includes the A10A. It's a much more simplified version of the A10. Flight model-wise, it's very similar to the C. However, it has much simpler systems management. The thing was, I was never actually very good at the A10A either. I, I could have gotten good, but I never put in a lot of hours through it. I think I probably only have 10, maybe 15 hours in the A10A total. I spent most of my time in fighters and then progressed off into my other modules, things like the Huey, uh, the MiG-21 Biz, the F-86 Sabre, a little bit of time in the MiG-15 Biz. I never really got around to spending huge amounts of time inside of the A10A which means I'm actually fami unfamiliar with a lot of the C systems, but this is only going to be a basic flyout. There are some ground targets that I'm going to use to, uh, to show how the target markers work on Allied aircraft and a few enemy targets that are on the ground. I might take a look and see if I can activate the weapon systems, but I, as I said, I'm not entirely sure. This is literally a noob's first flyout of the A-10C. But we've all got to start somewhere, I guess. Now, I think... I have engine power, so I probably should request a taxi first, shouldn't I? We hold the brakes for a second, what have we got here? Um, oh, it's already up to request takeoff, that's fine. While the rest of it's run, we'll run to the right. Yep, that's the unlock for the wheels. You know, I think the A10C actually handles nicer on the ground than the A10A where A does. This is very smooth to drive around. You can see my uh, my movements for the steering wheel. As I turn the steering, or the, the nose wheel for steering, the landing light turns with the wheel. So let's begin our taxiing roll. Oh, getting off target a little there. Let's try to line it up here a little. I think I'm getting a, yeah, I'm getting a bit of a crosswind. You can see it from the snow. Uh, moving me around a little bit more than I would like. Ah, still, all the fun and games of flying an aircraft out for the new time. It can't make it too easy for me since I'm not looking at getting into too much cockpit uh, combat here. Hey guys, sorry about that. I had to stop recording there for a moment. Without fail, the second you try and do a live comms recording, something will always happen. In this case, Telemarket has decided to call, despite the fact that I'm not on the or that I'm on the do not call list. So, uh, regardless, we didn't miss much. We just missed the corner back there. So, anyways, we're on the runway now. So we request takeoff. Hatchkovsky in field one one. Request takeoff. Now, 
as I said before, I have some weapon systems on board. This being a test flight, I could have taken all of the weapon systems off. However, I find it better to leave them on when you go out for your first flights. It's no point in learning how to fly the aircraft or take the aircraft off with no payload or minimal fuel load your first couple of times out. Better to actually have some weight on board because when you fly this thing for real into combat, you, um, you're you going to have the weight on board. So, I haven't been given authorization, but screw it. The auto startup sequence does activate the radios, I think. I think. It's possible that it didn't, that's why I didn't get a call back, but no matter. I should be the only aircraft in the area for this sim, so that's alright. I will line it up, carefully roll it forward a little bit, let the plane roll just to steady the, the wheel where I want it. Alright, steering off, apply brake to a stop. not going to line up. It's getting pushed around by that wind. Um, that's all right. That's close enough. All right, so all the navigational systems are now online. Everything is all powered up. Flaps down. Now, I haven't looked into what the rotation point is on the A-10 at the moment. I've always just winged it in the past, so I'll just do that again, and hopefully we won't crash. So let's see how this goes. to full. Let's give it a little bit of rudder. I'm going to have to work the rudder a little bit more than I would like because I'm getting pushed around a little bit. But as I said before, better to have the wind on. It gives a little bit of a challenge to your first flight. You can, of course, disable all the weather effects if you choose to, much like you can disable certain flight features. Again, I like to leave them on. Start to rotate. Hey, we're up. Flaps up. Landing gear up. Beautiful. Right, I'm just going to check external to make sure I did have all the keys I wanted down. Yep, gear is up. We're looking good. So there we go, first takeoff in the A-10. Now, where to go? I'll try and see if we can progress up through the clouds, get a little bit of altitude here first. If I don't talk a lot through this sequence, it's because I'm actually concentrating. As I said, this is a entirely new aircraft. This is the first time in the air. So I'm just monitoring everything at the moment. It's gone green across the board, so that's good. Progressing into the cloud bank, get above the storm. I wonder if you can see the lightning effects from above. It would be nice if you can. It's a bit questionable exactly how thick this cloud bank is going to be. Getting some odd glitches inside of the cockpit here from the cloud. It is worth keeping in mind that the uh, ooh, ooh, there's some horrible ones here. It's worth keeping in mind that the DCS Edge engine is still in beta. 1.5 is actually a beta test for this engine. The official release for the new Edge engine will be a DCS 2. So there will be some artifacts that pop in every now and again. For the most part, I found the engine to be absolutely beautiful. There we are, above the clouds. Clear skies and sunshine up here. Yeah, for the most part, I found the engine to be absolutely perfect with very little issues, but I have noticed the odd artifact here and there. Nothing too major. Completely forgivable considering the stability of the, uh, the engine. In fact, the only crash that I've had with 1.5 is initially I was going to use the Steam client as my 1.5 test build and leave my standalone client alone as I didn't really use the Steam client all that often and it would save me having to fully download DCS again as I didn't want to touch my standalone client but the DCS Steam client uh, seemed not to like the beta all that much and refused to start or refused to initiate after it did the update 
So I uninstalled that completely and I wound up downloading an entirely new, co uh, new um, client to update to 1.5. So I have two installs running. There we go. See, all the glitches have stopped now we're away from the cloud. So that's probably one I should put into the bug reports for on the, uh, the Eagle Dynamics forums. There's glitches when proceeding through the cloud banks. As I said, nothing major. Nice and stable fly out this one. We'll back off on the throttles a little bit here because I'm running the engines wide open. I don't need them up that high. It trims out nicely. Alright, so let's see if we can go find somewhere. So, F10 brings up your map. Uh, and I should be able to see where I am now. Oh, there we are. I'm progressing off over here. And there are the targets that I put in. So I'm heading in completely the wrong direction. Beautiful. Alright, so back to cockpit, let's bring this thing around. Okay, so I've turned the hog back around and we've put it back under the clouds because, well, let's be honest here, it's, it looks a lot nicer down this end of the world with the clouds and the air whisking past, the snow banks, the lightning storms. It's, it's much more visually impressive. Plus, I love flying low, in case you couldn't tell off my last ECS video. Altitude, altitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The texture work for the cities looks a lot nicer now. It, it is worth noting, they haven't actually done a huge overhaul of this map yet. Most of the... Altitude, altitude. Yes, I know altitude. Most of the changes with the 1.5 edge engine have been to sharpen up already pre-existing textures, or just replace a couple of them and crispen them up a little bit. The actual full overhaul for this map, I don't believe happens until DCS2, where I think it's getting a poly count change, it's going to be increased, accuracy is going to be increased, all the textures are going to be overhauled, the map's going to be a lot more visually interesting once it's complete, along with, I think that is the public release for the Nevada test range, I could be wrong, it might be available now, I haven't actually looked yet, I really should get into it because I really do want to actually try that map out, that looks amazing to fly around, and the idea of uh, buzzing at low altitude over Las Vegas is definitely appealing. So just the changes on the engine engine they've done makes this look far more up to date. It's it's never going to be a super visually impressive game or simulation in regards to ground texture work. It's, most simulators aren't. They focus on flight. They focus on uh, aerodyna uh, aerodynamics, on flight effects. You know, make the simulator as real as it possibly can be ground texture work is more of an afterthought than everything else, but this does look nice. Now, I'm very happy with the overall work. I'm definitely happy with the frame rate increase that you've got. Flying this low, I would usually pull 25 to 30 frames per second on the old engine. Now I'm seeing well, up over 70. The clipping of the bridges look much more accurate too. They used to have some really odd terrain clipping, but now they actually look like they're where they're supposed to be. Alright, so, let's check the map again. Yep, we're coming up on target. So what I'm going to do is activate the target markers so you'll be able to see what they look like. So right shift F10. We've got a blue dot up ahead. You'll see that's just appeared over the left hand side fire pull. Now as we close in on these markers, more markers are going to appear, including hostile target markers. Now there's a little bit of AAA, some various ground vehicles mixed in there, at least there should be. I haven't had too close a look at what the, uh, the auto mission generator actually put in for this. There should be some allied helos floating around as well, but I, as I said, I haven't had too close of a look. So we'll see what we get target markers for. And you see the number of blue dots increasing. This is the target markers that you get for DCS. For those who have been curious and I've been asked so many times, here it is right here. Now at this range we don't actually get any information on what any of them are, as we close in we will get more. Now looking at the map before, that should be the front line to allied forces. Hostile forces should be on the other side. Now we've got range, the dots comes in.
banked it around to the left a little bit here. That looks so nice, so nice to fly. Thank you again, Cole, for this module. I am I'm very happy with what I'm getting so far. This is really altitude, nice to fly. Altitude. Yes, I know, altitude. I really need to find a way of disabling that. Nearly every time pull I fly up, out, I've got up. the computer screaming about altitude. No, I don't want to pull up. Go away. God, it's like flying with my ex-girlfriend, I swear. Pull up, yeah. pull up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what I'm doing. She used to nag me exactly the same way. Okay, so we got power lines ahead, so I do want to actually give it a little bit of altitude here. Man, the power lines, no, actually, they look like oil rigs. Bank around, get a good look at the ground units in this area. And there we go, we've started getting the markers for the red. So you can see how the target markers work. As I said, most of the time, I just fly like this. Although I have no idea how to run the ground systems on the A-10 at the moment, so that's probably not going to help. And I don't appear to have any of the weapon systems active. Um, do, 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 do. What would be... Just trying to think of exactly what the weapon systems would be. I don't want to hit escape and interrupt the recording at this time, so I've already had to edit it once. I'll turn the target markers back on. We'll actually go and have a fly close fly past the ground vehicles and see exactly what they are. Uh, tank T80 from looks. Yeah, main battle tank. Altitude, altitude. Yes, my love. Shut up. Pull up, Whoa, pull up. Crap. Okay. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Oh, you're right, I should have, alright, I fully admit, I should have expected that. Um, yeah, engines are fine. Master Caution, be quiet. Yeah, alright, I'm going to get out of here. I'll, I'll come back when I actually know how to fire the guns, because at the moment I don't appear to have any weapon systems active. Pull up, pull up. Oh, God. Altitude, altitude. All right, let, let's head back pull to up, base. Pull up. Yep, those are oil rigs. There we go. Oil rigs, not power lines. All right, so we'll bank it around right. Yeah. T-80s don't have anti-air weaponry. I must have got sprayed out with the small arms fire. Which should explain why the A-10 really doesn't seem to have cared that it got shot. Yep, yep, that is light machine gun fire. Oh, how I wish I could turn the bombs on and blow you up. Alright, uh, that's on my short list. One thing I have noticed, which in the Tracer Fly Flick Fly over here, one thing I have noticed with uh, DCS 1.5 is those power lines have gotten awfully low to the ground now. The, I think they used to be out of scale slightly. I could easily fly under them at mock speeds in most fighters. Now, you know, the space is a lot less. So, we're still setting on course. We'll go see if we can land this thing. More to the point, I see if I can not crash it. What have we got there? AH 64 Apache. Alright, let's go have a look at him. down. Coming up on the runway too, so I've got to overshoot it to bank around and come back into landing anyway. He looks like he's trailing smoke. Pull up! Pull up! No. Altitude! Altitude! I know. Yeah, it looks like he had the same encounter I did. See the runway. You can 
the throttles down. Okay, we are ready for landing. So, landing gear down. Flaps deployed. And down towards 200 knots. Altitude, altitude. No shit. You'd almost think I'm landing. Throttles back. Oh, of course, yeah, I'm drifting badly. No, 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 no. Not the DCS grass. I don't know if the edge engine does the same thing with grass. Uh oh, that's whoa, that's that's right out there. Ooh. That does not qualify as my smoothest landing. Brake, 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 brake. Qualifies my smoothest landing at all, but it's down. Alright, so apparently I've been approved for parking. God, I wish I could switch that buzzer off. Last caution way on the ship, and I want to settle that. And hey, it's not too bad. You can see with the bullets scruffed up the outside of the plane, but all the wheels are still intact. Could have been a lot worse. Alright, so we bring it back around for parking. So, as I just said on the live comms, not my smoothest landing ever. It, well, it, it could have been a lot worse, considering that this is the most time I've actually spent in the A-10 module. You guys have just literally seen my first takeoff and my first landing with it. Thank you again, Cole, for getting me the key for this one. I was going to get it myself eventually, but it was pretty low on my list. Although now, having flown it, I really wish I had had it a lot longer. I really think I'm going to be putting in a bit of time with this one. I really did enjoy this flyout. Now, as a general rule, DCS modules do take a little bit of time to learn. Uh, general systems tests, you can be looking at 20 hours to learn all the system's operation. To actually be proficient in combat, you can be looking at 40 or 50 hours or more. I hopefully won't take me that long to actually be blowing up stuff on the ground. I've got a couple of T-80s that... Uh, I owe a little bit of a revenge to, so I'll be putting in the effort and the hours to try and get this one on, which means you'll probably be seeing the A10 on channel again soon. Now, obviously, all of those learning times I just listed are to learn the controls of the A10 in full simulation mode using no assistance whatsoever. So the full manual startup uh, routine, all of the manual computer controls to operate the weapon systems, everything. You could be blowing up things on the ground within probably five or six hours if you use the more gamey options that are available anyways ladies and gents i hope you enjoyed the video click like if you do subscribe if you want to see more fly smart fly safe and i'll catch you in the skies mm -hmm.